Tell us, tell us all about your amazing new project. Okay, so it's called Forecast. Um, it was, I don't even know where to start. Um, okay, so we have QWERTY on there, Lil QWERTY's on there. He features on Yo Te Quero. Um, Charlie Mumbles produced that, and then um, Malik XYZ produced everything else on the project. Um, he, ex he executive produced it with me. Okay. And yeah. So yeah. how how did it start? Was there like one event that inspired this album, or like what was the inspiration going into this? Um, so there was not really any inspiration. I just like I knew I wanted to make a project, and I knew I wanted to, it to be good. I mm -hmm. knew I wanted it to sound different. And that was it. So and the inspiration was just like pursuing your own. Your own unique lane in the, mm -hmm. in the sounds you're trying to produce that's exactly yeah what it was um and yeah this was this project was really like a learning process like i learned a lot mm -hmm. um i made a lot of relationships off this project lost a few but um yeah i don't know it was it was it was a really 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 long process and long on my part because like i didn't really know what i was doing it was my first project you know but yeah it's out and it's done <laughs> <laughs> so how was it like trying to cultivate like a, a sound that that's project worthy like what do you feel were the themes going through your head like i need this certain sound throughout the project or i need to project this vibe throughout the entire project like what was the what was that unique sound that you're trying to push i don't really know if i had in my mind a sound that i was trying to push mm -hmm. i just knew i didn't want it to sound like anything out and um me and malik just like work so well together yeah. like he just we just understand each other but you know it took time for us to get there and you know we we had to learn a lot about each other <clears throat> make a few songs that were trash and <laughs> <laughs> but yeah he's no it was just it, we just kind of just made the songs for it, honestly, and then it just came together how it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. So yeah. That's dope. So it's just, it's really you and Malik just work so well together. There was yeah. already a sound just there waiting to be put yeah. together. Yeah, and he's just, um, Malik just like, as I was working with him, like I figured out who I wanted to be as an artist. So that really, really, really like helped you know, towards the end of the project and putting putting the project together. Um, Malik really like showed me a lot of things and I learned a lot working with him. Like I learned how to listen to music differently. Like I built a relationship with music. It wasn't just something I did. Like I started to fall in love with it a little bit more. Interesting. Yeah. So what, what did he help you find? Was it just like, like different aspects of production you hadn't heard before? Or like what, what did he help you uh what did he do to help you dig into music and love it even more he he was the one who told me to use my voice as an instrument and mm. so like when we did yo te quiero the way i did it before just giving an example i was singing it and malik was like no don't do it like that he was like make it more bouncy and i was like and I was like, okay. I didn't know what he was talking about yeah. at first. And I was like, fuck, I'm just going to do this. And I was like, tell me, son, how you doing? How you doing? Wait. And he was like, yeah, exactly. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's it. So I learned how to use my voice as an instrument. I learned how to produce. Um, that was the main thing. I learned how to produce. Like, I learned mm. that I could produce. Like, I really just found my wings, like, as an artist when yeah. I was working with Malik. That's so, yeah. awesome. And I totally hear that like your voice as an instrument mm -hmm. because like even on that little snippet i heard earlier it was like i don't have you, have you ever heard raven Lene before the name sounds familiar I mean, she's another she's another incredible female vocalist and her voice is just so instrumental mm -hmm. it's like yeah she's singing lyrics but right. it's also just her delivery is so unique and right. fit to each track's production mm -hmm. and i feel like i def i heard that in like three seconds yeah and um also Though I hear a lot of similarities between you and like a lot of the older black female singers, mm -hmm. like well, not super old, but like Erica Badu, mm -hmm. um, Jill Scott, yeah. 
um, like that era a lot. Uh -huh. So tell us about your inspiration from that era and how those singers influence you as well. Well, um, to be honest with you, I didn't start listening to Erica Badu until I was like um, probably like 15 or 16. Mm. My mom was very, very, very strict about what she let us listen to growing she up. Let, let yeah. you listen to Erica Badu? No, Jill Scott. Like, Interesting. She was like really only like playing gospel music. We, yeah. should, we were allowed to listen to Destiny's Child and Beyonce, but and Lauren Hill, Lauren Hill. Ooh, Lauren. Lauren Hill. But um, I was I was listening to a lot of gospel music growing up, so I think that's like where the soulful influence came from. Oh. And I, but I love Erica Badu and I love Joe Scott like yeah. a lot. Um, yeah, I, I I started I don't think I yeah until I was like fifteen or sixteen. Of course I heard songs from them, but like really like dove into their discography yeah. not until I was like fifteen sixteen. Interesting. So what was the was there an artist or is there an artist that you look up to now that you're like I just like they're my inspiration to sing better or i want a certain part of their delivery or beyonce beyonce <laughs> yeah like what because when i was like 10 like i remember like being like especially like being a black girl like seeing like a black woman like be that big of a pop star and be like that good at what she does like able to dance and sing you know what i'm saying like i was just so in awe of that when i was 10 and i was like I like I remember I saw her on TV. She was on the BT Awards. She had a silver two piece on, and she was singing "Deja Vu." And I just remember in my head thinking, like, that's what I want to be. Like, that's what I want to be. That was like my main inspiration. And I was listening to B Day um, a little bit when I was making forecasts too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. uh, what about when you were younger? Who, like, when did you start singing, and mm -hmm. what was? Like, I'm sure you loved Beyonce forever yeah. and ever. Like, we all love Beyonce. But right. what, what was the inspiration for you to start actually singing and be like, I'm able to do this. I'm going to put all my heart into singing. Oh, well, it wasn't Beyonce at first. Okay. It was gospel music. Mm. My mom played a lot of gospel music. And, like, that was, like, my first introduction. Not my first introduction to music, but that was my first, like, when I first felt music, when I was listening to gospel music. And I just liked the way that it sounded and, you know, like the choirs, the instruments and everything like that. Kirk Franklin, like he's a great producer. So that's when I was like, when I was like four, I started singing when I was six, I was like, oh, I can sing. I, oh, knew, wow. I always knew I could sing. No one in my family, they were like, oh, Kamaya sings, she likes to perform, she has to put on talent shows. But I knew that I was like, I was like, no, like I'm gonna be a singer when I get older. Mm -hmm. And my mom didn't know I could sing until I was like nine. So when I was nine, you know, everyone started kind of taking it seriously and then I started performing. Yeah. What do you yeah. mean your mom didn't know until you were nine? Would you like sing she, in your room or sing on your jogs or how would she on my jogs? She said, well, it's not that she didn't know that I could sing. She just like didn't know I could sing as well as I could. But yeah. I knew I was like, I used to tell her like, mom, I can sing. And she'd be like, good job. She was never like, no, like, you okay, can't. Honey. Yeah, she was like, okay. And then when I was nine, she was like, oh shit. Like you can actually sing. So yeah, yeah. Wow. I sang this little light of mine at a family reunion. And then she was like, oh, okay we're gonna start taking this seriously. That's so awesome. yeah. Um, tell us about your dad. How did your dad feel about you like taking singing super seriously? Oh, he loves it. Yeah. My dad's so like, my dad's so supportive, like the most supportive person. And my dad's super like, go against the grain, like do, do you. My dad's super like, do you follow your dreams? And he's always like sending me like motivational videos. Like you can do anything That's you so want. Cool. You can be anything. Like you got to over, like get past the obstacles in your mind. Like my dad's so supportive. I have a really supportive family. Like very, very, very supportive. I'm very lucky. Yeah, so, no, yeah. that's incredible. Um, what else do you think is, what, is there something you'd like to say to like your current fans or your future fans? Um, just, like what got you to this point? Like what kept you singing from nine to today? Because a lot of people will will just give up on their dreams or say that's too that's not for me. It's too right. it's too far fetched. I could never do that. It's just mm -hmm. a dream. What would you say to those people that to help them keep going like you have? Honestly, fuck what people have to say. Like that's how I feel. Like fuck them. Like really that's what kept me going like in the process of forecast and everything like that if i have something in my mind and i want to do it i'm doing it and i'm just like i don't care like what i have to do to get there that's just like my mindset i just that's all i see mm -hmm. so like you can't really listen to other people you have to like tune out the noise because no one really like 
you could tell me like what your dream is and stuff like that and i could support you but i don't know how it looks in your head you know so like you have to focus on that and keep going and that's what i would tell people just focus on your vision or what you see for yourself and keep going that's what that's what i did that's what i'm doing and it gets easier as you go along it's hard at first but it gets easier yeah yeah that's awesome that's a great message um so are you pretty competitive then do you ever like play sports or no but i'm competitive in music i think yeah Yeah. i'm competitive in music i love it i love music it's more i love it but i like the sport of it too Uh i do i like the sport yeah i can't even lie like i like the sport i didn't i didn't understand the sport of music until i was 16. i didn't understand it was a sport and then i was around like rappers and stuff mainly Mm. rappers and they're very competitive like really 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 competitive and I was like, oh, and I was like, okay, cool. So then I started, <laughs> <laughs> so then I was like, so I have to be the best. And yeah. Interesting. Where was that? What, you were hanging out with a bunch of rapper dudes? Um, when I was like 16, it yeah. was like, it was out here. It was in Arizona. Okay. And uh, yeah, it was me, Malik and uh, Injury Reserve mm-hmm. when like they were like in the dentist's office and yeah, I saw yeah. them, they were really competitive. And like, that was like my first introduction to seeing like, people actually do music and actually like you know pursue it Mm -hmm. and like be really good at it and i was like oh this is possible so you fix it up that's awesome so sorry were you raised here or no i was raised in atlanta Atlanta. yeah in georgia and then you moved here when i was 16. okay Mm -hmm. so no i want to say like around like at 17 is when i was like around them okay Mm -hmm. cool um how did you meet Malik and like the injury reserve guys and like how did that come about? Um, Parker reached out to me like way, 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 way back. Like when they were did their first, first, first project. Really? Yeah, yeah, way, way, way back. Yeah, but we, me and Parker went, we went to the same school. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Their first first project, not cooler colors. The one like depth chart, yeah, like passing uh-huh. no no like dead ass like passing cds around the school like Dude, what? they've been hustling for a minute yeah they've been doing this for a minute so parker um reached out to me and i just started hanging out with them yeah. and yeah and then you guys just tearing it up on the playground and well like <laughs> i was just like they just kind of like needed me for like a few tracks but like they just like let me hang out like i was just around them and um yeah, I was just around them and I just like saw. So it was like when I was in high school, when I was like in a senior in high school and we started hanging out. And wow. so, yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. So do you still talk to any of them or you have any? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes I don't really, stuff? we don't really talk that much because like they're busy and stuff like that and I'm busy with my stuff, but it's all love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally. That's awesome. So you and um, Malik were the main, uh, the main voices on this track. Is there any any other production or like anyone else you'd like to to shout out for helping you make this project a reality? Oh, Charlie Mumbles. Charlie shout Mumbles. out Charlie Mumbles and shout out to Lil Quarty. Shout out Lil Quarty. Yeah. And shout out to Malik XYZ, of course. Um, and shout out to Joanna, Michael, and Justin. Like they really like they were with me through like the the root of the project when we did all the videos for it. Okay, cool. Yeah. And also shout out to Joanne's and Michael's um, fabric stores where You've made your own costumes oh, for, my God. for music videos. I didn't get it from there, but no, okay. shout out to them. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Um, any like last messages, last things you want to share? Um, go stream forecast. Go stream, listen. And shout out to Oval. Shout out to Geometry. I love ovals. It's a great shape. Who's what is oval? Oval is our company. It's our production company. Oh hell yeah! yeah. Shout out to oval. Shout, shout out to oval. Out, shout out Charlie Mumbles. Shout out Malik. Shout out Malik X Y Z. Shout out um, Eli because he I I found out that he helped Malik on the project too. Oh wow! Yeah. So shout out to Eli. All right, sick. And um, yeah. And Cordy, sorry, my eyes are watering. Up. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, this has been Joel and Luis with Mood Industries. Peace out.